everyone. Welcome to Ladies on a Roll. Today, I have a very special guest joining me. Uh, she is a hilarious female comedian. Welcome, Paula Faust. Yay! Hi, Paula. Where's the fanfare? Where's, Who's it? Right? where's the intro music? Where's the intro music? Come right? on. What kind of comedian are you? I'm uh, sure I would walk on, walk on to come on, get happy. Right? Right? Oh. Copyrights. <laughs> <laughs> That's copyright. <laughs> don't have a don't have the budget for that. So we have, as Paula just mentioned, uh, she mentioned the song Come On Get Happy, because we are talking about the infamous the Partridge family. Look at her beautiful cup. It's so awesome. <laughs> Look, I believe you're also wearing a t-shirt. Art, can, can you show uh people who are there you oh, go? Ooh. Ooh, yeah, kind of wow. looks like I just showed showed my boobs. A but. little bit, yeah. So for those who are just <laughs> listening, Paula has a cup that has the Partridge family on it. it says, come on, get happy. She has a shirt with little uh, partridges on it that says the Partridge family. It's very, very cute. We'll, we'll try to put up a picture if we can. So let's get into it. Um, let's talk about if you've never heard of the Partridge family because you are probably younger than us, uh, the Partridge Family was a 1970s show about a widow mother and her five kids. They decided to form a band and make a hit record. And mm -hmm. then they decided to just travel around the country in a groovy school bus. Yes, people use the word groovy. Uh, the comedy contrasts life on the road with the cozy suburban life they return to after the show is over. So like, yeah, they're traveling on the road and then they come back home and, you know, chaos always ensues. Mm -hmm. But there is always some feel-good music, hapless adults, because you have to have hapless adults, scheming yeah. kids, and heartthrob teens thrown in for good measure. Let's talk about this a little bit, Paula. Um, you had mentioned and wanted to talk about the Partridge Family because you're a big fan. Is that correct? I'm probably the biggest fan. Biggest fan. There. So let's get that right. Let's oh, that okay. Right. Well, what you forgot to mention was that the Partridge Family was based on a real-life mother and kid kids group called the cow sills mm -hmm. so that's where they got that's where they got it and they actually were thinking about having the cow sills make an appearance but then they decided against it so oh, whatever nice. but um no i'm a huge when i was little back in 19 because it ran from 1970 to 1973 mm -hmm. so in 70 i was like eight years old but i was you were like eight, eight to I know, I know. Because look, you would never guess it. Look how young I look. I know. You'd well, never guess I was 62. I totally well, look like I was born in 82. <laughs> well, so you were basically the same age as Danny Bonaducci. A yes. rough age, because he was about eight when he started the show, I believe. I think he was 10. He yeah. was 10 oh, when he started. So he's, he's two years older than me. But hello, I didn't have a crush on Danny Bonaducci. Why not? Do you think I'm lame? You think I'm lame? I, I no, would, I'm not. I, I like Danny. I, I, Danny, Danny was a train wreck from go. Okay. okay, a train wreck from go, based on the way he was raised, and he had like this tyrannical dad and stuff. But did you know that back at age. the time, though? Did you know that back no, at the time he had no, a bad? All I okay. knew, at the, all I knew at the time was okay. I was eight mm -hmm. to eleven, eight to eleven, a uh, twelve when the when the um, show was on. Yeah. And that was when I just started like, Ooh, boys are cute. Oh. And, you know, started to, started to, you know, see crushes and stuff. My very first celebrity crush though, was on Jack Wilde from HR Puff and stuff. If you Whoa. remember that. Uh, remember roughly. HR Puff and stuff? Uh, okay. Roughly. I, I didn't That's have right, a TV you're a growing up. Yeah, I'm a little younger That's and right. we didn't have a TV growing up. Yeah. So I, I, I saw glimpses here and there of different shows mm -hmm. being at friend's house and stuff. I, I roughly remember, uh, are mm -hmm. you referring to the young boy that was in ATR yes. Puff and stuff and he yeah. played like the little piccolo or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, is, I roughly. He was, uh, but, he, was you know, my, he was my first celebrity crush. Oh, it was okay. David then after David Cassidy was Vince Van Patten, but he was very short-lived. Very short. Vince Van Patten. Vince Van Patten. Oh yeah, kind of wanted to marry him. 
but oh, wow. I didn't know if I wanted to get into the Van Patten family. They were, you know, that's a whole nother show. Yeah. But I, yeah, that, that started my crush. And uh-huh. then I thought, you know, at the time I was, I was at the perfect age for the Friday night lineup on ABC, which okay. was, and I will, and I will give it to you. This is kind of right now, right around 1972 uh-huh. was Brady Bunch, mm-hmm. Partridge Family, mm-hmm. Room 222, oh. Odd Couple, Love American Style. Love and American if, style. If my mom, if my mom <laughs> and dad, show. if my mom and dad drank a little bit too much wine, yeah. they would kind of fall asleep, so we'd be able to stay up for Love American. Oh style. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that was does. quite fancy. Well, let me ask you this: Did you have a color or black and white TV? Because that was a thing back then. We did not have a color TV until 1973. Interesting. So yeah. that was a big so, deal. Yeah, I would have. I would have watched some of the Partridge Family in um, in black and white, and then yeah. some of it in color. Yeah, I, I think a which lot of then people... I got to see David, David in all in his color. Yeah, of course. Wow. He's a good looking guy back then, too. And I and I get it, too. I I watched almost all the shows for this episode uh, because wow. I, I had not I've not seen it. You know, I I'd mm-hmm, probably mm-hmm. have maybe seen like a repeat here and there. Uh, mm-hmm. but nothing that stuck in my head, you know, like something on Nick at night or something like that. So I, I didn't, yeah. I watched almost all of it for this, uh, for this episode here and it, it's a lot. So did you, <laughs> did you have a favorite episode? I think my favorite episode, I kind of have two. Oh, okay. Um, one was, and I think it was called the, the name of the song, Ben, Bendella. Okay. It was the episode that had Lewis Gossett Jr. and <gasps> Richard Pryor. Yeah, and that's it, a good episode. And it was about the Partridge family. The Partridge family is going to this town, mm-hmm. and they needed money. The town needed money to save the firehouse. Yeah. And so um, Danny took it upon himself to, and it was, it was. if you really look back, there was a lot of race relations mm-hmm. going on in that particular episode, really ahead of its time. And, um, I, I like that episode just because it was at the time when I was little, um, you know, growing up in Lakewood, pretty much a whitewashed town. Um, Lakewood, California. You know, I, ref- Lakewood, California. Yeah. yeah. There, I did not have a lot of exposure at mm-hmm. all, really, to uh, African Americans and stuff like that. So um, it was really interesting to see how they dealt with that particular episode and in that episode they didn't want the town didn't want the Partridge family to perform because they were white yeah and they didn't think that it was going going to go over very well and so Danny and Keith they had to bridge bridge the song and right stuff. well and, and you know bridge and the reason why that was because even back in the very early 70s combination between whites and blacks at the time were still not fully intertwined i mean everybody was still at certain levels of segregation even though there was a lot of laws and regulations and protests and riots and stuff like that that were against it 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 still no one had fully gone back together you know to integrate everybody Mm -hmm. together so it still was a little bit of a hot topic and for the partridge family to touch upon it even as comedic as it was with richard pryor and luke gossett jr it still was a hot topic. And I think the most beautiful mm-hmm. thing about that particular episode is Keith said, oh, I, I want to write a song that I think would go really well. And he wrote that song, what's it called? Balego? B- 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 Bandela. Bandela, yeah. And it, was, and it was beautiful because at the very end, they end up singing it and it was really nice. And you see like the crowd getting excited and they're kind of dancing and yeah. um, having a good time. And I, I think, you, you know, a lot of today's generations don't see that initial merges that we had back then. I, I think people don't know what that racial tension was back then. And to see something like that on TV was helpful, was very helpful at the yeah. time. So I, I, I get it. it, was, it yeah, because it was only six years. Uh, the Civil Rights Act was passed in 1964. Oh, yeah. So that was that episode. I think that was the last season. So that would have been 73. So that's only nine years Mm -hmm. since the civil rights act. So to me, it was, it was pretty significant, but as a little kid, um, I remember watching that episode and thinking, wow, the Partridge family are really cool. 
because mm-hmm. they're hanging out with African American people and stuff, and it that's that's not a bad impression to leave on a eleven year old, you know. Yeah. So Partridge Family was way ahead of its time. That's all. It was, yeah. And and one of the things that was interesting that they didn't put in that episode is because Lori. Uh, Susan Day's character Uh was typically the one that uh, throughout uh, she was the one who kind of had a little bit of a political stand on things or a a new look as a young person to what was going on. So it was surprising that they didn't have a little bit more for her about it, Uh but, um, but yeah, she, they all had their own roles when it came to that particular episode. And of course, Danny did some funny things Uh in there too. Cause there's like some, there's like a mob gangster kind of guy that kind of comes yeah, in yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, he's like, you got to get us the money. And Danny's like trying to negotiate it. Like he is. It's, it's actually <laughs> kind of funny, but yeah, in the end, everybody wins and, you know, and, and so funny that uh, Richard Pryor's in that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, really, I, I went and looked up like when he actually started, this is right at the beginning of his career. So oh, that yeah? was kind of amazing. Okay. Yeah, I, I was kind of curious. And of course, Luke Gossett Jr., who could have predicted that one from that show, yeah. you know? And and that's a great thing about that show. They they ended up producing a lot of phenomenal actors that went on to do other things. And we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit later here. So you said there was a second episode. What was uh, your- The second? other episode was the one where the skunk went into the bus mm-hmm. and then they all ended up spent s- smelling like skunk yeah and they were supposed to perform i think it was a hospital benefit yes. or something and they ended up they ended up um all having to bathe in the tomato juice correct because that was the big thing right so they mm-hmm. bathed in the tomato juice and then they had to put like circus somehow they had circus outfits I, don't, mm-hmm. I can't remember where the circus outfits came from no and the, they the outfits came from the, the operating different- room the outfits came from the different people of the hotel. So That's the, the, what it was. So okay. uh, Shirley's outfit was one of the showgirls that put on a show there at the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. So they all had clothes from the hotel. I, I, I paid attention to the episode, let me tell you. So there well, was- It's been a while since I've watched all those episodes. What? So. <laughs> I know. I, I, I did look a little before this. Uh-huh. I did look a little bit at some of them, the highlights and stuff, but I think I probably can- So that episode alone had some discrepancies in it. First and foremost, they left the dog on the bus. They left the dog on the bus. Like, what the heck? And then on top of it, so some little kids see the the reason why they got stinky a second time is some little kids Mm -hmm. saw that the dog was on the bus and thought the dog was lonely. So they took the dog out and started playing with it and then gave the dog back when they were all in their new Mm -hmm. uh, clothes that was around the hotel. So we're just like, what? Like, yeah. So there's that's why they had to perform in the operating room. Operating room. They performed in the operating room and everybody was looking down. And they sang, I'm pretty sure that episode they sang, um, I can feel your heartbeat. They sang in the very beginning, they sang the song, I think I love you, which was confusing to me because it was all about the skunk. And a lot of Mm -hmm. times they would have songs that were a similar theme to what was going on. So uh, this was about, I want to say it was about the second or third episode in this, in the season and uh, they sing it and it, you know, it's like, Oh, this is a cute song, but it's about the skunk getting on a bus. And you're like, what? what? A lot of the songs didn't match up. Yeah. They did not match <laughs> up at all. They also sang, I think I love you on the episode where they were um, there was a, a- like a pro, not I don't know if it was a protest per se, but it was about women's rights. Oh, and the Partridge uh, family performed at it was in a park. He sang something. And the Partridge else. family performed. I thought he sang. I think I love you. No, 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 no. But it was not. A, uh, I think I love you. It was like uh, it probably had the. It probably had rain in it. I think I counted yeah. one time. They have like seven songs that are about rain. Oh, really? Oh yeah, wow! I don't know what their what their deal is with rain, but I think that one was. Uh, this is what it's like to be lovers. No, no. Uh, what's the song about waking up in the morning? Hold on. Uh, I woke up in love this morning. I think it was that song. I woke up in love I think it was, this morning. I can sing the entire song if you want. Oh me wow! To. Okay, yeah. Let's, <laughs> well, I I actually had some favorite episodes myself. My. Okay. My favorite episode, just so you know, because I'm watching this as an adult. 
I saw the Partridge family in 2022. So this is different eyes than my one-year-old self would have seen it. Uh, <laughs> first and foremost, I absolutely love Danny Bonaduce in the show. I saw a small document or not a documentary film, but like a little bio film he made uh -huh, uh, about uh -huh. the Partridge family called Come On, Get Happy. Yeah. Yeah. And, I've seen that one. and I've heard him in other interviews say that he kind of saved the show. And you know what? He did. He deserves no, he all did. that credit. Mm -hmm. He was a mm -hmm. phenomenal little kid and he was so good as an actor. I mean, he talks about how he nailed his audition. He had really good rapport with Dave Madden, which who played Ruben. And he had such a great, great sense of an actor as a kid. And not a lot of them do because Tracy and Chris, they don't end up doing much for the show. And they were cute no. little kids. So they were called the who actors. So they were known as the who actors. You're right. The who, Yeah, the who actors, because all they did was their only lines were when Shirley would make a reference to some contemporary actor Correct. or something. Like one time she said Dinah Shore and they just turned around and went, who? who? So that's all they ever did. <laughs> yeah, they were called so the who right. actors. Uh, but my, one, one thing oh, that's sorry. interesting about Danny is Danny was severely dyslexic. Yes. Yeah. I, I found that had, out. But he had a photographic memory. So that's how he uh, learned his lines. And he had a, uh asshole for a dad. Really? Oh, bad. yeah. His and we'll dad, get his, into we'll get into the yeah. actors a little bit more uh, down the line here. And um, but yeah, what I was going to say, some of my favorite episode uh was from Danny Bonaducci. And my first one was in season one, episode four. It was called See Here Private Partridge. It's where Danny gets drafted and Shirley's trying to correct it, but everybody at the military base keeps passing her off and telling her yeah. she's wrong. So she just gives up and she sends Danny into the draft and he <laughs> ends up, <laughs> ends up going past like quite a few examinations because the people are not paying attention to them. They're just going right. through numerous people and mm. stuff like that. So it gets, it gets pretty funny, you know, cause there's a little uh, hilarity that ensues. And then finally they catch on and they're all, all these big burly men are staring down at him going, you know, who are you? And they kick mm. him back out. So that was, that was a very funny episode. Uh, didn't he but, wear, uh, didn't he wear a uniform that was really big, for, big on him? No, not that episode. No. Oh, okay. Okay. No, they had them pretty much undressed and stuff like that. So, yeah. I, well, you know what? Let me take that back. I, I actually don't remember. Let me just take that back. I don't remember if he wore a suit, but I don't think so. Yeah. I think he was in regular clothes by the time they kicked him out. Okay. So the other episode that I really liked that I was laughing way too hard because I'm just a complete dork. It was <laughs> called <laughs> help. And it was with Lori and Shirley. They went camping because they had like a day off and they decided to go camping. Mm -hmm. But Keith, Danny, and Ruben were really worried. So they decided to follow them on their camping adventure. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. just before they all leave, they're making fun of them. Like, oh, girls can't camp and blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. like girls can't do that. And they're like, yeah, we can. We can do anything. Mm -hmm. And the funny part about it is that they, they got Ruben to go and be with them. So Keith and uh, Danny convinced Ruben to go with them. And Ruben is in a suit and dress shoes, by the way. And he's hiking. Right, right. <laughs> and so, so what ends up happening is that he's slipping and falling and breaking himself like all over the place. And I'm just such a goober that I'm laughing at all of his physical falls and hurts and uh, stuff like that. So it was, it was pretty funny. And then at the very end, um, Danny starts leaving trails of his underwear and socks the girls end up right. finding them because of that and then there's a girl scout troop uh that's kind of like backing them up and then they start making fun of the boys and that i don't know i just thought that was kind of funny yeah <laughs> so some of the actors that were in the show like we were mentioning earlier that end up being either more famous after the show or mm -hmm. were kind of already a, a little bit of a name yeah uh, mm -hmm. like when the show started so uh, Harry Morgan was in the show. And before I continue on with my actors list, Harry Morgan was in it twice. And, and some, so were some of these other actors. They were in uh -huh, here more right. than once. And here's the thing I didn't like about when they had the actors come back, they would try to disguise them differently. So for instance, Harry Morgan, the first one, 
first episode he was in, he was just himself, uh, clean shaven, and he was a victim of getting hit by Shirley at, in the bus. Right, okay? right. And then the second episode, <laughs> he was in this uh, old town, and they just had a mustache on him. Like, oh, we couldn't tell the difference between yeah. you and Harry. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So they did that a lot. Uh, they had other actors where they did that too as well. So, but uh, the coolest thing, uh, Farrah Fawcett, Jacqueline Smith was on there. Yep, yep. Um, Mark Hamill was on there. That was, mm -hmm. I mean, I recognized him immediately. Richard Mulligan. And if anyone doesn't know who Richard Mulligan is, he played in the one of my favorite TV shows called Soap. It's a, a comedy oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. called Soap. And then he was also more well known for a TV show called Empty Nest, which was an, actually a next door neighbor of the Golden Girls. So uh, there was that. Of course, we mentioned earlier, there was Luke Gossett Jr. and Richard Pryor. There was Rob Reiner, Norman Fell, Howard Cosell, Burt Convey. Now, Burt Convey comes in twice as two different people. One he is the marine life manager or operator of marine yeah. land. And the other time he comes back as a love interest for Shirley. It's like, gosh, girl, you just met him. Like, you know, last season, <laughs> could you have hooked up with him then? So, uh, and there's Vic Tabak, Meredith Baxter. Meredith mm -hmm. Baxter was the uh, hippie girl. I don't know if you recognize her back then. Well, and let me give you a little tidbit. Uh, David started dating after that episode. David started dating Meredith Baxter in real life, and then she in real life, and she oh. left him. She left him, broke his heart. That was like his first real serious relationship. Wow. Broke his heart, and then she ended up marrying David Bernie because remember yeah. she was Meredith Baxter That's Bernie, Bernie. and yeah. now she she um, uh, divorced David Bernie and came out as gay. I, yes. And that was yeah. a couple of years ago too. Yeah. Mm, I, yeah. I kind of remember that roughly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have she, a trivia. I have a trivia question for you. Okay. You can, you can try. Who you'll probably, this is not that hard if you really watched all the episodes. Okay. <laughs> um, what two cast members of the wizard of Oz were on the uh, Partridge family and what, um, characters did they play? I know for sure. Ray Bulger was there he was a scarecrow mm -hmm. um i don't know who the second character would be margaret hamilton the wicked witch ray bulger oh, played shirley's dad and margaret hamilton yeah. played reuben kincaid's mom on the show oh interesting Which i, I didn't i didn't fun. i did not know yeah. that now um the other thing I would, i'd like to say about ray bulger is I'm, I'm not sure if i'm pronouncing his name correct Bulger. Bolger, Bolger, thank you. Yeah. And the one thing that got me upset is because I really loved him. I thought he was fantastic. And when I found mm -hmm. out later after watching the episodes that he was a scarecrow on The Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. I was so happy. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know why they replaced him at the final season. Uh, Shirley has a different dad. In, yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to say his name is Jack Coogan or something like that. Uh, he was Jack a Klugman? little bit. No. Uh, oh, Jackie Coogan? Coogan, yes. The child actor? Yeah. Yeah. I was upset to find out that she didn't get along with uh, Ray Bulger. Bulger. Mm -hmm. Ray Bulger. Yeah. Uh, and I think that goes back to her old acting days when she was doing um, the classics like Oklahoma mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Music Man. Yeah. Another interesting and uh, what I uh, that was that was another one of my favorite episodes where Ray Bulger was on it um, because I remember at the time, I didn't really understand what they were talking about because the parents were into therapy and yeah. stuff and <laughs> that was kind, of, kind of hippie stuff. Yeah. And no, they, they were kind of they trying to be to hippies Shirley. is what it was. They were kind of conservative. Right. The mom was conservative, but the dad was kind yeah. of open. They and could have taken lessons from your parents. My, <laughs> my parents, on. yes. The best hippies yeah. ever. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, but on that particular episode, um, Ray Bulger tells Shirley, "We're really worried about Lori 
because did you see her this morning? She was talking to us and her arms were folded and she oh, was yeah. very tense and stuff. And then Shirley goes, her arms folded because she has no buttons on her bathrobe. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. The, anytime <clears throat> Shirley's parents came, they came about once a season and they always had some type of fight. And oh. it was always the grandpa that was like trying to live his best life while grandma was like being stern yeah. and putting her yeah feet down and, you know, being stuck in the mud type of thing. The very first time Shirley's parents come, it was hilarious because the dad wanted to sing. And so <laughs> I, I don't know why they put this poor actor in a recording studio because he could clearly not sing. Yeah. yeah. But it was very cute and you still fell for it, you know, yeah. and he was very sweet. He was very endearing. And I, I loved his acting so much. Mm -hmm. um, I was... Yeah, he, he was a great surprise, and I was very sad to see that he was replaced. Uh, so anyway, so let's let's continue talking about some of the discrepancies they had in this show. Shirley's late husband dies, and no one ever mentions it throughout the run of the series. Uh, mm -hmm. No one misses their father. No one has any issues. Yeah. Um, Especially dad, the little kids. Yeah. The little kids aren't going like, to be crying because they miss their dad. Or like, what was dad like? You know, maybe they don't have memories. No, nothing. Everybody was very well behaved. So the difference between season one and two, three, and four is season one had a different intro song. And season one's intro song was really about how they became the singing family right. on the road. Right. And um, it's not come on, get happy, but it's the same tune. You know, it's the same mm -hmm. melody that you're hearing. And the song actually just talks about how Danny convinced uh mr kincaid to uh make them and he got reuben to sell a song and it really came together when mom sang along that's what the that's song. what was the song was <laughs> yeah so so the song changed to come on get happy and i gotta admit the, mm -hmm. that when it did change it it is a great opening theme song you know we don't have yeah. theme songs yeah. like that anymore with tv shows no huh and yeah, i, I kind of miss you that, might have some you? track yeah, yeah, but, yeah you kind of have a track. So, like the Brady Bunch had a theme song. All of them had a theme song. Oh yeah, that's right. The Brady Bunch mm -hmm. did. You know, to this day, I'm still not a Brady Bunch fan, and I'm uh, not either. I did see a couple episodes growing up. It was very confusing for me. I didn't understand it then. I don't understand it now. I'm an adult. I still don't understand <laughs> it. So, so I, I think a lot of people who have seen. The Partridge family can attest that uh, the kids are not playing the music. It's all on soundtrack. Um, it, it was mm -hmm. very obvious back then because uh, you can you can hear the music fade in. You can hear it fade out. You know, they're still yeah. singing and the, the words are going and you're like, oh, uh, the kids can't play the instruments. And my gosh, no. did Tracy have issues just hitting a triangle or a cowbell or tambourine what the heck was wrong with well, that kid they she had like actually, ADD or something they <laughs> actually gave her there's no tambourine I don't think there's hardly any tambourine in any of the songs mm -hmm. um but they gave her a tambourine because it was the only one of the only instruments she could actually hold because she was so little yeah so they yeah. gave her a tambourine yeah um, but what I what I thought was interesting was in the first few episodes they don't have David singing and David is right. David is lipping to the um, studio musicians mm -hmm. singing, I guess. And even Shirley wasn't singing on the first few episodes. Right. Which was surprising yeah. because they hired her specifically mm -hmm. because she was a singer or she she, yeah. she is a singer. Uh, she's still mm -hmm. alive. So uh, but yeah, they yeah. they gave that to her because she specifically is a singer. And David and Shirley end up singing after a couple episodes and so they're lip syncing to their own voices but mm -hmm. on the actual albums themselves i discovered that shirley jones wasn't as featured as much because right. she was not um a younger generational voice that they wanted to hear they basically wanted to hear david cassidy which was surprising well, they, you know they also because sony made over 500 million dollars on the merchandising and the albums oh yeah um yeah, with and the reason that they predominantly featured um, David was because starting in 1971, David started touring mm -hmm. and stuff, and he was making so much money. I mean, they released nine albums from mm -hmm. 70 to 73. Yeah. 
So, yeah. and, and it just was more predominantly David. David was even the larger picture mm -hmm. on the album. And so they really wanted to bank off of his popularity. And I can so see why. I mean, he was so good look. I'm, I'm looking at him now going, oh, hubba hubba. You know, yeah. like, yeah, that brings some warm, tingly stuff inside that I didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's he's a good looking guy. You know, I can understand why yeah. he was a heartthrob back in the day. Um, did mm -hmm. you, I know you were going to talk about this a little bit later. You've seen him in concert as an adult, but did you see him when you were younger back in that day? No, no. You did no, not? No, I wouldn't have. No, because I was, I was a kid, you know. 10, 11, I wouldn't have been going to any concerts or anything like that. I guess and we I had came different from a very, upbringings. yeah, I came from a very conservative, my first oh. concert, I think I was 17. Was oh, the first one wow. I went you're to. so old. Yeah. Sticks, it, Dave Mason and shut your mouth. I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> Dave Mason and Bob Welsh was my first concert. Um, I don't even so. know who Bob Welsh is. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Is you he always part of the remind Welches? me that you're what? Yeah, no, the, the Welches. I'm 53. The great people? The, the great yeah, people? The great people, the grape jam. Yeah, I just turned 60, by the way. Oh, so. holy. Well, congratulations for making And a uh, holy moly. Yeah. Holy moly, I know. Five 60, years from getting a 60. senior citizen discount, so. No, there's a lot of places you already get senior system discount at 55, sweetheart. Oh, yeah, well, I'm like not there yet. The so movies. I know. The movies. The it movies. only costs me 10 bucks to get into the movies. Oh, snap. Uh, yeah. But uh, anyway. But yeah, let me, let me, let me talk to you about my adult life with Wait, David. Just before you way. do, I just have to ask, were you part of the fan club back then? Were you a fan of? Like they had an actual they, fan club. Uh, they did. They, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was, I found out later that that was totally controlled by Sony. Um, I was not part of the fan club as a kid. Oh, okay. But I did join a, I think it was a Facebook group okay. back in like 2011 or 2012. Ooh, and it so, was the David. So I really, know. yeah. I know. I was 50. <laughs> oh my gosh. When I joined my first fan club. The, uh, okay, but, nice. Yeah, I wish I had been part of the fan club because they, supposedly they got like stuff. But you had to pay fees and stuff to be in the fan club. Okay, well, I we attended, me and my my best friends that are in the background there, um, we attended the David Cassidy concert at La Mara Theater. And uh -huh. the executive director, Jeff Brown, who I love, um, he was... Uh, he set up a meet and greet for me and my friends afterwards, oh, no. but it was really for me because he knew I was the biggest David Cassidy fan. And I'm sorry, so, what year was this? It was 2010 or 2011. Oh, one of, the, no. one of those years. I can't wow. remember exactly when, but first notice in the picture, especially on the bottom, right. Mm -hmm. I had a really good booby shirt, you know, you I did. Was showing, I was showing some cleavage because it you was sure going to be were. David. That was important. Oh, so anyway, okay. so we, we meet, after the show, we're in the green room and we meet mm -hmm. and um, both of our moms had just died. Actually, you know what? It's earlier because my mom died in 2004. So it might've been 2006 or seven, oh, but okay. both of us started and his mom had just died. And oh, David so Cassidy's we, mom. Yeah. So we oh. were, I was telling him, and I was sorry. Just for our listeners, and, uh, David Cassidy's mom is not Shirley Jones. It was. Uh, correct. It was, that's a stepmom. That's a stepmom. Evelyn Ward. Evelyn right. Ward was his mom. And so we were talking about it, about our moms and stuff. And, and, um, that's the bottom left mm -hmm. photo. That's where we're talking about our moms. We where he's looking up, that. where he's kind of looking up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What was and he then, saying to you? Um, he was just talking about, you know, to be honest with you, I think those were the David alcoholic days. Right. Because According to all the records, that's, that's kind of when that was happening. Right. Was in and the 2000s. He was, you could tell during that concert. And then I saw him again in 2012 and it was much more significant there. Really? I feel, I feel yeah, I feel really bad for him, but, um, but you could tell he was a little bit loopy, um, mm -hmm. when we were talking and stuff. So he was kind of just talking, he was doing most of the talking, talking about his mom and how much oh. he loved her and how much he missed her and stuff. So we're listening and stuff like that. And then, he, um, and then he went in for the hug 
That's uh-huh. the bottom right. He goes in for the hug because I wasn't uh-huh. going to be pretentious and say, will you hug me? Even though I oh. wanted desperately, I so would have slept with him at that point. Merged bodies. <laughs> uh, just married, quick- I've been married 37 years, yeah. but I would have. Steve knows. Uh-huh. If David Cassidy was anywhere near me and the possibility was there. I totally would have slept with him. Well, uh, 100%, as, a, as a spoiler 100%. alert, David Cassidy has passed away. You could always have ghost sex. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. If that would happen. I don't mm-hmm. know. But anyway, so he, he goes in for the hug uh-huh. and we hug, swear to God, long hug. Yeah, it was. Like, like, 50, like 20, 30 seconds. We're yeah, hugging. it was. And then I pull back, David pulls me back in <gasps> oh, for the extended hug that i don't have amazing. it on video but that's uh, that's the top picture you know yeah. these are great photos i'm gonna show if you mind if i show the other p- pictures yeah, yeah, you yeah. sent me here so this is another one that looks Sweating. like he's going in for the hug and yeah. this all of us looking so beautiful and you guys do you but, look gorgeous but notice how notice how nice i was i didn't even take the middle spot next to david yeah. Well, who was taking these I, photos I gave for you? That, um, the executive director, Jeff Brown. <gasps> the executive no. director of the theater. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, he was watching the whole thing. He thought he was he was so happy because mm-hmm. he had made this happen. And he's just the greatest. I'm not kidding you. One of the greatest guys living, Jeff Brown. Well, just so and, you uh, know. He made this happen. And- David looks amazing in these pictures. So Doesn't photogenic. He? Yeah. I mean, yeah. how old would you say he's here? Okay. That was... Um, I want to say it was probably 20, 2006, 2007, something like that. So mm-hmm. that's, um, he died in 2017. Yeah. So that's probably, um, what, 10 years? He's probably like 55, 57. Oh, wow. Around there. Yeah, he's kind of younger. So if anyone's hearing thumping, it is Paula fanning herself because she's just Getting so hot and bothered looking at these photos. I am. I am. And I'm still so, going through menopause. If, if you're hearing, yeah. If you're hearing these thumping sounds, that is Miss Mrs. Sorry. Paula Faust Sorry getting all that. heated up again, seeing these David Cassidy photos, which I don't blame her. I mean, he's, he's yeah. a hot tamale. So he was, uh, he was. Yeah. The last time I saw him in concert was 2012 um, in Vegas. And so that was like five years before he died. And he was uh, puffy and oh, he yeah. forgot, he forgot, he forgot the lyrics. He was singing, oh, a, um, no. I want to say a monkey, a monkey's tune. He was doing a monkey's cover and really? forgot the word. Yeah. I forgot the words in the middle of it. And he was, we were like front row uh-huh. and he, you could tell he was a little glazed and stuff. It was sad. Oh, it was really? sad to see, to see his demise. Yeah. Yeah, he's forgetting his, uh, forgetting the lyrics. Um, oh my gosh! Yeah, and he, he, he was very different from when I had seen him like five years previous. Yeah. Um, sweating a lot too. Oh, I mean, I know gosh. people sweat on stage, but it was it just it, it was a marked marked difference between the previous time. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, yeah. I can imagine that he was now, did he normally sing a lot of his favorite songs from the Partridge family? What's interesting is cause he stopped, he toured from like 1971 to 1974. Okay. And then in 1974 in London, he did a show. Cause at the time he was doing stadium shows, mm-hmm. he did a show and a 14 year old girl got crushed to death at his show. Oh, and, um, wow. Yeah. Got crushed to death. And so he gave up touring after oh that. Oh my gosh. So this had for to be af- years. after he quit the show. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He toured for a little bit after he quit, the, after he quit the show. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, uh, so he, he, he just, and I can understand he was only 20. Oh God. What would he have been? 22, 23, so 23 something like that. Yeah. 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 That's um, a tough one. You know, so for him, for him, it was really overwhelming. He was also mm-hmm. really tired of the whole thing of how he couldn't have a life type of, you know, yeah. type of thing. And then he uh, started releasing more songs in the 90s, in the mm-hmm. early 90s. Um, but at that time, he was really rejecting his Partridge family connection. Wow. 
Yeah, okay. he, he released a song called Old Dog New Tricks, um, some other some other albums, like three or four albums. Didn't he also and pose nude for Annie Leibovitz on the Rolling Stones magazine? But that was actually in 1973 when the show mm -hmm. was still going on. Oh, and that was oh. his re that was his rebellious thing. Oh, they, that was his big it was, rebellion. Just for our listeners, it was controversial because you could just see a hint of a couple pubic hairs and society mm -hmm. and life as we know it flipped out. I mean, it was like a huge yeah. scandal at the time. Uh, now, if we saw a couple of pubic yeah, hairs, we'd be like, dude, go shave those off. You know, like nobody would care. I yeah. know. I know. Who has pubic hair anymore? Yeah. Come exactly. On. I mean, I just but, saw a cartoon um, commercial for pubic hair. So yeah, whatever. Uh, well, <laughs> that's, that's sad towards the end of his life that everything happened the way it yeah. did. I mean, he was very talented. In fact, some of the notes I wrote about him from season one to season two was how strong his vocals got because he's like you said, he started singing yeah. on the tracks mm -hmm. a couple episodes in and, and you can tell when his voice comes in mm -hmm. because it, it really truly sounds like him mm -hmm. and his voice between season one and season two got very strong, very confident. And it was, just beautiful. And I, I saw stories where he, yeah, said, he had a really nice voice. He had a really nice voice. And they, and he made comments about how he would sing slower and they would speed up the track a little bit to make him sound a right. little bit younger and stuff. Nonetheless, he still mm -hmm. sang those songs and he sang them very beautifully. He also had a phenomenal stage presence when he sang. I noticed that especially mm -hmm. from season two on out, he really understood how to sing, perform, be in the crowd. I mean, he was just lovely. Yeah. He seemed very sweet, you know. And I well, think he got a lot of that. Got a lot of that from his dad, Jack Cassidy. Did he? Yeah. It was I, yeah. He was a. I don't know about his singing voice, but he was a pretty decent actor. Mm -hmm. Um, and he probably got a lot. And I know his mom was an actress, so he yes. probably got a lot yeah. of tips and stuff from them. But the other thing, one other thing that I wanted to say about his recording, I mean, his performing career. Um, in the nineties, it was in the nineties and the early two thousands that he also did, um, some Broadway. He did band oh, of brothers with yeah. his brother. He did, he did music man. He did Joseph and the amazing Technicolor dream coat. He also did some, uh, uh, in the late eighties, early nineties, he did some TV and stuff. But what's interesting is in the late 90s, early 2000s is where he realized that he still was very bankable as mm -hmm. the David Cassidy, Keith Partridge years. Yeah. And there was a lot of people like me that were fans at the time that were, you know, there's so much of nostalgia that goes on with a lot of singers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so he, and it's interesting because Danny Bonaducci was on, I don't know if you ever listened to Mark and Brian. Yes, and, I did. And Mark, Mark and Brian, and Brian was a, a, a radio station here in Los Angeles, uh, popular for many a decade. Yeah, they for were 25 two, years. Yeah, they, they were, were on, radio hosts they were on that for had a years. lot of yeah. really fun people on their show. So to our listeners who are not from California, would not know who they were. So I'm sorry, go on. But what, so Danny Bonaducci was on Mark and Brian, and this mm -hmm. was probably in early nineties mm -hmm. and Danny Bonaducci was on Mark and Brian. And he was talking about his love for David Cassidy because Danny Bonaducci at the time was having big problems. Mm -hmm. He had drug problems and it was terrible. He had a oh, terrible, wow. terrible life. And David Cassidy is the one that helped Danny Bonaducci get yeah. rehabilitated mm -hmm. and get back on his feet and stuff. Yeah. So Mark and Brian wanted to have both of them on the show. Yeah. And they were able to get Danny Bonaducci and David Cassidy on the show. And I think it was a show where they had people come uh, at the studio. Mm -hmm. And I think David Cassidy is saying that's when he realized how much of a fan base he still had yeah. for the old Partridge Family stuff. So he started touring and doing all the old Partridge Family songs. Oh, wow. And he did Vegas. He he did big, big venues. I mm -hmm. mean, like I said, I saw him at La Marta Theater, which holds 1,200 people, and it was packed. Yeah. Completely packed. And it was packed with women my age that mm -hmm. were throwing their underwear on the stage. And what? The whole thing. So 
Who Dang wants some granny panties? Up. Who wants some granny panties? I did not. They told me to to, uh, to throw my bra on stage, but then my boobs would have been at my ankles. So oh. I said, no. Yeah. If I brought back a bra, for sure. But <laughs> Nothing like you your belly button ring in my... between your boobs because they're hanging so low. <laughs> for sure. For right. sure. I know. It's like, oh my God, I'm sweeping the floor. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> like leaving a trail. But anyway, so he so he realized how much money mm -hmm. he could actually make with this. So he went back to touring and it was all oh. all the stuff he did was all Partridge Family wow. songs. And people loved it. And I like the fact that he went back to embrace it because he was rejecting it for so many years. Wow. The whole Partridge Family thing. So yeah, and yeah, so it was cool. Susan Day was someone who kind of rejected it the the whole partridge family thing after oh, yeah. a while uh, oh, yeah. there's lots of conversations mm -hmm. directly from david danny everyone else in the the cast saying that they up, are upset with her that she doesn't want to join the reunions mm -hmm. and whatnot and now right. you know david cassidy's gone danny bonaduce currently has some unknown medical problems as we speak right they right. don't know what's wrong mm -hmm. with him he's not able to speak which is terrible because that guy has a voice, mm -hmm. you know, he really does. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a shame. And, oh, and, uh, the actress who played Susan Tracy, Crow died. Yeah. Susan Crow mm -hmm. passed away unexpectedly. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a shame that she doesn't want to still, you know, cause that's what catapulted her into some more fame. Hi there. Celeste here interrupting the podcast because I have some fantastic news. My interview with Paula Faust goes so much longer than I anticipated, but you're not going to want to miss the next episode because she's going to tell us about another encounter with one of the members from the Partridge family. So you're not going to want to miss that. Hit that subscribe button for me so you do not miss out. I'll see you then.